Hello my dear students. In this session, we will discuss about profit and loss account and balance sheet. Schedule 3 was introduced wide Companies Act 2013. Under Schedule 3, we have general instructions on preparation of the financial statement. Part 1 pertains to how the balance sheet should be prepared and part 2 with respect to profit and loss account and consolidation of financial statement. So under general instructions, one can get to know about disclosure requirements of accounting standard and also in addition to that the substitution of any other requirement. Basically, in the case of balance sheet, assets are divided into current and non-current and current assent for classification must satisfy certain criteria. In a typical balance sheet, one can see assets and liabilities. Assets both tangible and intangible are owned by the company. An asset is a source controlled by the company and is expected to have future value of economic. Typical examples are machinery, cash, bank balance. Liability on the other hand represents the company's obligation. The obligation is taken up by the company because the company believes these obligation will provide economic value in long run. Liability in simple word is a loan that the company has taken and it is therefore obligated to repay back. Typical examples are short term borrowings, long term borrowings. One has to prepare balance sheet and other financial statement in horizontal form. But now even vertical format is also allowed. And all the schedules in the financial statement have to be having schedule numbers. This is a typical way how the balance sheet looks like. One can see that. So we need to have the details under particular column. For example, the headings classified will be equity and liabilities. Second heading, assets. Then you also have shareholders application money pending for allotment, non-current liabilities and current liabilities. Coming to Profit and loss account. Profit and loss account also has a specific format and in short it is also called a statement of profit and loss account. No appropriation account in statement of PL is required. Appropriation is to be disclosed in reserves and surplus. Some ex exclusions from PL are managerial remuneration and competition, details of license capacity and install capacity, quantitative information of actual production etc. This is the format of p and So you must have heard of the term top end and bottom end. So top end pertains to sales and bottom end pertains to profit after tax and usually these are prepared from the user's perspective. The profit and asset loss account is also properly referred to as income statement, statement of operation and statement of earning. This usually gives me the revenue of the company for the given period. It can be quarterly based or yearly based. 
the expenses incurred to generate the revenue are incorporated tax and depreciations are incorporated and any other expenses which are in likely to be reflective are also taken care the state statement of pnl is usually prepared at the year end if prepared and these are called as annual statement if prepared at the quarter end they are called as quarterly statement so one can see the format of profit and loss account and it starts with revenue from operations that is their main income second one being other income which is not their regular income third classification is expenses then you have profit before exceptional and extraordinary items and tax incorporation of exceptional items profit before extraordinary items and tax then extraordinary items profit before tax then taxation expenses and then profit for the period from continuing operations revenue from operations means sale of product service etc in the case of financial company it will be interest and other financial services so dear students the takeaway from this chapter is that the financial statement provide information and conveys the financial position of the company and the statements are compulsory to be prepared under the regulatory bodies the expenses part of the pnl statement contains information on all expenses each expense can be studied with reference to notes depreciation and amortization is a way of spreading the cost of asset over its useful life finance cost is the cost of interest and other charges paid when the company borrows money profit before tax at the pbt is total revenue minus total expenses and profit after tax that is pat pat is nothing but pbt minus applicable expenses when we talk about balance sheet the main takeaway can be that the assets side of the balance sheet displays all the assets items assets are expected to give an economic benefit during the useful life assets are classified as non current and current assets the useful life of non current assets is expected to be beyond 12 months and current assets are expected to be within 12 months assets inclusive of depreciation are called as gross block and net block is gross block minus accumulated depreciation the sum of all assets should equal to the sum of all liabilities and balance sheet and pnl are statements which are inseparable and they are also connected in many ways so this is a small information which i wanted to share with the pnl and balance sheet thank you